Okay, so what I'm going to do in this video is show you our new checklist, Senior One Exercise Checklist, that is. And the idea is that this is an interactive checklist, meaning you can do it all on your computer. You don't need to print it out to make it work. And it's actually even better. I'll show you some of the features and how it works. So before you can actually use the interactive part of this, you need to have Adobe's Acrobat Reader and that you can find here uh, if you want to get to this website just go and search adobe reader and it should come up here make sure it says getadobe.com and download it from their website um, and then when you get here you'll see there'll be download acrobat reader get that one don't get the pro one because that'll you'll have to pay for that they do do a free trial or something i think but then you will have to pay so but you don't need that okay so here is the checklist that we're looking at and so what we've got on here is that at the top here you've got a student name and you can just enter that all you're going to have to do is click on there and you'll type in the student name let's call him uh, oops, sorry, Johnny be good and then you can put in the start date I'll put in the today's date what is today's date 29 um, 03 2020 and then the complete date so let's put in say the 29th of let's make it five months of the 8th 2020 okay so there it is it's done you you set up now you can see that it's blue the backgrounds are blue you can change that if you like you can do that in the settings and I'll show you quickly how to do that what you what you, basically what you do is you go up to the you can't see it in this window at the moment but you go up to a Acrobat Reader preferences click on that and then you go to this it'll show this little screen you go down to, under the categories to forms and then highlight color and you can see there where it says fields highlight color just change that to to either clear or white just so you can get a white background if that's what you want I don't really care myself but I think it's kind of interesting having it highlighted there but all right so that fills in those details now what you've got here are the boxes the normal check boxes the, the the big exciting difference here compared to before is that this has three modes now it has this empty mode so it basically it's white then when you click on it it goes orange and then when you click on it again it goes green so you've got those three modes so what they mean mode one is that it's inactive students don't need to do anything they don't need to practice that exercise they don't need to worry about it for now if you click it once that means you you've got to practice it that, that's indicating the student now you're working on that's that's say, we'll call that working mode and then the third mode is completed and that means that they've achieved the standard uh, for that particular exercise which is normally where you would tick it off but the 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 I, I think the great part I think here is that having those three modes is that you can say to the student let's say you have a brand new student you say okay, I want you to practice the first three exercises there you go and then they come in the next week and you see how they went and say okay exercise one you're up to standard sounds great uh, exercise two and three still need work all right so let's let's move forward and what you're going to do this week is do exercise four five six and seven and so now that they know they've got to work from on two to seven they come in the next week you have a look and you go okay number two is looking good number three still needs work number five looks good uh, and number seven look good bang so now you've got to work on three four and six but I'm also going to give you some more exercises eight nine ten 11 and so now they can see what they've got to work on now just keeping this in mind that the green ones don't mean that they completely stop practicing it of course there is these exercises the, the green is actually not an indicator that you no longer practice only the white is the indicator of no more practice but the green is that it's a lower priority now because they've reached the standard of those they still have to review it still have to practice it sometimes but they're what they're really working on are the orange ones that's what you're you know that they haven't reached a standard yet on those exercises now the other beauty of this is that you can well obviously you know using ticks you can use a pencil and, and rub it out and all that sort of stuff but it gets messy whereas here it's on and off all the time but you can also go to other areas so if you want to say look i need you to do exercise 50 and 51 as well this week then you can do that you can skip ahead uh, and pick certain exercises that you want them to practice on as a rule and we've talked about this before as a rule you want them to to move through the exercises 
in order, but there are times I understand where maybe you want to give them something to work on on the song or they want, you want to get them started on the rhythm exercises or something like that, reading a bit further ahead. So you say, okay, go and work on exercise number 27 and number 28 this week, and then they might come back and you, they've, they've successfully completed number 27, so you can do that green. And so you, so you start to get a really good picture of how they're going. Now, once they've completed a whole row, and this is kind of encourages them to get all that done, say 1 to 40, is that then you've, you can see these are the 40, 80, 120. Uh, then you can click that and they will get a blue star for that. So the idea is that, that this, the blue stars will, will extend across as they fill out all of those exercises. Once it's a fully green line, all 40, then they get it. Now, a teacher recently mentioned that they were having trouble remembering what students were practicing, what they're up to and so forth. This is what G4 is all about. And so I, I want to just clarify this. I think most of you are onto this now, but just, just in case someone has missed it, which obviously a few people have, then this is, you don't need to remember what students are up to or what exercises you've given them. The idea of the checklist is that does it for you. And that's the purpose of the checklist because as you grow and you end up with, you know, say 100 students, you can't be remembering what you gave everybody and keeping notes all the time. It's just too much work it, it, and it becomes messy and unorganized. So what you what you can do or what the way the G4 is, is designed is that I don't need to remember. All that happens is, is when Johnny comes in next week with his group, I bring up his exercise checklist and I can see exactly what he's supposed to be working on, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, etc. So I, I've got a very clear picture of what he's working on. And then what I can do is, you know, I update it here. I might say, look, don't worry about exercise 10 for now, right? Even though he's not completed, I might just say, just give that a break for a week and work on exercise 11 and 12 instead. So I can, this is flexible. I'm, I'm able to, to change it uh, based on what I think the student needs to be working on. And so as a teacher, you do not need to write notes and remember what your students are supposed to be working on. This is what the checklist does for you. Now, if you want to write some notes, if you like writing notes, that's fine, but don't that, that that's that's not what this is about you don't need to write notes and don't think you need to write notes you might want to write a few things on the student personally that you think was worth knowing maybe you, you find that they struggle with reading or they struggle with something in particular so you there is room there for doing notes if you want to do them but the checklist is going to tell you really what they're working on and where they're up to now the other thing here is that you should take screenshots of this and you can even put them up in your video when you do your video lessons. And, and when, you, when you do your lessons, if you video, you record it, then you can maybe bring up the checklist during the lesson. And that way you've got a copy of it on the video. But the, the alternative, which, which I actually prefer, is to do a screenshot of that and then save them. And so you can go back and look over Johnny's progress and you can say, you know, three months ago, Johnny checklist look like it does here and then you know and then you come three months later and you've got you know lots more green uh and he's progressed and he's got two stars all that's full etc so you can have a look and it's really great for showing the parent you can say you know every couple of months you can send the the parent the two different checklists and say this is where he where you know johnny was two months ago this is where he is today he's making good progress and, you know, you could really, if you want to do it, you could do it mathematically, you could work out the percentage. You could say, currently he's completed, you know, 22% of the checklist when, you know, it was only a month ago that he was only up to 3 or 4% of the checklist. So you, you can see the advantages of this. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions on that, um, I will roll this out for the rest of the, the levels, but that should be available. This one will be available to help you guys just to have a play with and have a look at and if you've got any questions then let me know just one actually one thing i will add is that with your students that you don't need you can give them a copy of this checklist but remember that if they use acrobat then they're going to be able to change these on there but as but that doesn't matter because you'll still have the master copy they may be a, maybe change their copy but you, but you'll have the master copy but what you what you can do if you want to avoid that altogether is just screenshot it for them just just give them a screenshot of what they need to, to what this looks like and then when they come back the next week each week just give them a screenshot of their checklist and update it if you're doing video lessons uh, you know you can just screenshot it and send it through to them right there and then or you can ask them to screenshot it whatever whatever works for you
All right, so that's it for now, and hopefully that'll make a, a huge difference to your online teaching.